Pastor Mark, the question is, could you tell us the difference between a soul and a spirit? Certainly. In the Bible, in Genesis chapter 2, verse 7, the Bible says, God breathed into the man the breath of life, and man became a living soul or a living being. In the Bible, the word soul has to do with the product of the body and the breath. That equals a living soul. Sometimes in the Bible, a soul represents life, where Jesus says in Matthew 10, don't fear him who can kill the body, but those that can kill the body and the soul in hell. That is to say, in the final destruction, life will be gone. So the soul can die. Ezekiel 18, 4 says, the soul that sinneth, it shall die. So what is the soul? Two things in the Bible use the word soul. One, I am a soul. I'm a living being, the product of breath and body, a living being. Secondly, life. When I die, I do not have a life, so the living soul doesn't exist. What about the spirit? The Bible never uses the term immortal soul. 1,600 times the Bible uses soul, but never immortal soul. 1 Timothy 6, verse 16, it says that only Christ has immortality. So we don't have natural immortality. Um, in Job chapter 2, it says, shall, man be more, more, shall mortal man be uh, greater than his creator? We are mortal. Romans chapter 2, we seek for immortality. We don't have it. 1 Corinthians 15, 51 to 54, this mortal shall put on immortality. So currently we do not have an immortal soul. We are mortal, subject to disease, suffering, and death. We'll put on immortality when Christ comes. So what is the soul? The soul is the life that I have when I die, but life it no longer exists. I'm no longer a living soul or a living being. What is the spirit? In the Bible, the word spirit comes from the Hebrew word ruach. And Ruach is simply breath. God breathed into man the breath of life. He breathes his life-giving spirit into man, and man becomes a living soul. Now, if you take your Bible and turn to Ecclesiastes chapter 12, Psalms, Proverbs, Ecclesiastes chapter 12, Ecclesiastes chapter 12, and uh, you look there at Ecclesiastes, you get some further help in this. It says... Speaking of the body in Ecclesiastes 12, 7, it says, then the dust will return to the earth as it was, and the spirit returns to God. So it is not the soul that returns to God, it's the spirit. What is the spirit that returns to God? It's not something that's conscious, not something that thinks or feels. It is the life-giving breath of God. Now, how do we know that spirit and breath are the same? Go back to Job 27, verse 3. Job 27 and verse 3. How do we know that the spirit and the breath are the same thing? You find that out in Job 27 and verse 3. Job 27, verse 3 says this. It says, as long as my breath is in me, now the King James Version says in the next phrase, and the spirit of God in my nostrils. In the New King James, it says the breath of God in my nostrils. So spirit and breath are the exact same word in the Hebrew language, the breath of God, the spirit of God. In Psalm 146, verse 4, it tells you what returns to God. Now remember, we read in Ecclesiastes 12, 7, that the spirit returns to God. But look what it says in Psalm 146, verse 4. What we're showing from these texts is the spirit and the breath are the same thing, not the soul and the spirit. Psalm 126, 146, verse 4. It says, his spirit departs. Now, in the King James Version, it says his breath departs. He returns to the earth and... In that very day, his thoughts perish. So what is it that goes back to God? It is his breath or spirit that goes back to God. The life-giving breath or the life-giving spirit goes back to God. The life-giver, we go to the dust and our thoughts perish. 
So is this spirit or breath that goes back to God something it can think? Certainly not. So let me be very clear. What is the soul? It's a product of the body and the breath. We are living souls. It is the very life that I have. When I die, what happens? The body goes to the dust, the spirit or the breath goes back to God, the thoughts perish, and that's why it says in Ecclesiastes 9, verse 5, the living know that they shall die, but the dead know not anything. That's why 53 times the Bible says death is but sleep. I hope that helps, Matt. It does. Thank you for, uh, that was a good explanation. Thank you for clarifying that.